The more we do, the more people can see it. To combine the animal world and filmmaking, um, yeah, it would be an ultimate dream at the end of the day. And nobody really prints anymore. But when you walk into someone's house and you see this amazing picture up on the wall. What's left on the cave wall is how we remember our history. It's how we depict what happened. It's the vases that were left over. It's the mosaics that we find. That's how we know what was in fashion. That's how we know what the materials they were using to paint, to sculpt. Jazz and modern were my happy places. They're the place that my body felt most at home. I've transformed wanting to do an interesting painting to now capturing emotion and telling a story. The reality that I'm not as fast as I want to be. I spent easily 240 hours trying to do some animation and even that much time was nowhere near enough. jobs though that keep me busy. I work at NWP as the visual arts coordinator. So here at NWP or Northwestern Polytechnic, uh, this space is actually referred to as the vault. And this is home to all of the art that isn't on the walls, all of the art that isn't framed. And this is just where it all get, comes in, gets cataloged and put into our matador system and it's all taken care of. I am in charge of the whole permanent art collection. There's over 3,800 pieces and in the summertime I also am in charge of this beautiful space, the glass gallery. So this year we chose Tammy Baduk to be our um, artist and these are all of her pieces in her show called Chapters. And in my evenings, I teach here at the Center for Creative Arts um, pottery, wheel throwing. I haven't been um, an instructor as long um, as I think I feel I have. It always feels just like yesterday that I started doing pottery itself, never mind instructing. So I'm going to say 
I think I've been doing it for about three years. I was really fortunate that um, my three daughters actually got together for a birthday in, I think, 2019. They got me pottery lessons. And I came to the Center for Creative Arts and started taking classes, and I was terrible. I was a terrible pottery student. I mean, I was a good student, but I wasn't good at pottery. So I always bring that up too while I'm instructing that, you know, it takes time and practice so you can get good at what you're doing. It's very methodical. It's very, very relaxing and it's like a source of meditation and calming. And every time I come here to the center or work in the clay, I just feel a sense of calm and it's relaxing. I think a lot of people feel the same way, um, especially on the wheel, with the wheel going around. It's just, you really have to think. You take yourself away from everything else and you just work on what you're, you know, what, what is in front of you. It's going to get dropped six times. So, okay. So it will get dropped on all six sides. I won't throw this whole piece because that would just be like a sh I will have two pieces this size. Normally I would weigh them, but I'm going to say about, you know, they're about three pounds each. And now I'm going to do some wedging because this would be um, part of the pottery. Also, this is a type of wedging to teach people and to teach kids. So wedging just realigns all the particles of the clay takes out any air. And then I'm just gonna do a little compression to it. So a fair amount of physics involved too, hey? That is right. And then if you have this shape, at this monkey shape, when you're done, you know you're wedging correctly. Yeah, I like to think that um, if you were a perfectionist and you started pottery, that you would tip that perfection, you would lose a little bit of it because you can't be perfect when you're doing pottery. So I feel that that helps a lot of people. I think really it is such a time where you have to be so centered and so involved in what's in front of you that you do forget things. So I think maybe not all potters, but the ones I know definitely. Well, I think that each and every person that does any form of pottery, and pottery is a big, that's a big word, it entails hand building, wheel throwing, sculpting, because, because of your medium that you're using. Um, I, I just think that each and every person has a different flair, a different way they look at something, a different color that they're going to choose with glazing. I think it all becomes a personal preference which I think makes it more of an art form than a craft. So we do a lot of dipping here, uh, which is uh, gives you more coats, let's say, of glaze, like a, a thicker um, amount of glaze will go on with dipping. All right, so when you are glazing your work, you will wax the bottom of your work with some emulsion wax, and you wax it up about a quarter of an inch up the side and that is so when it's sitting in the kiln that the glaze doesn't um, stick onto the shelf. Um, and also double dipping is an absolute no. We are not allowed to double dip anything and this would be my example I use during classes of what not to do while during well glazing. It's sharp, it ruins the shelf, it ruins the disc, but moreover it ruins the pottery piece for the potter and that is very sad. In this room, this is where the waxing and the glazing is done, and this happens prior to putting it to its final firing in the kiln. In all of these buckets, are uh, the, they all contain the glazes that we use. Um, on top of each bucket, you will see a little uh, vessel that has been glazed in that color, and that's how you distinguish the glazes for the people, so they can see what color. Um, and I say that because, for instance, licorice, which is black, I'll give you a second. This is the color of licorice. So that's the iron oxide that makes the color and helps them to turn to the black. There is a little bit of chemistry, but um, nowadays and with um, social media 
and the amount of books that we can purchase. There are so many glaze recipes available to every every public studio. So our one main goal here at the centre is to always use a glaze that is food safe um, because we don't want anyone being um, you know, affected by any chemical. Um, also we try not to do any matte glazes, we're more um, satin and a shiny glaze. We often get people reenacting that scene from Ghost. That happens more than you would know. And often a man and wife team or a girlfriend and boyfriend will um, come and take the class and that will be one of the poses. And yes, we do. We set it up. And I generally am the photographer <laughs> and take the picture. Yes. How often? <laughs> you have no idea how often. Gosh, that's something actually that um, my students give me trouble about all the time. Um, I actually don't really care for any of my pottery. Um, I like some of the sculptures, um, but I really, I'm very, very critical of myself and, I'm, uh, and I do have that side of being a perfectionist. I know I can sit down and throw a mug or a bowl or a casserole dish or whatever I need to throw, I can throw it, but is it my favorite piece? or is my favorite piece still coming? It's always how I think of it. Don't give up. That's my advice. Don't give up. That's it really. You just have to start. You have a starting point and it, the more you practice, the better you get. It's just, that's just how it is. But don't get discouraged and don't give up. During like each process is different so at the beginning when you're throwing I mean don't give up because your throwing is going to get better um, and for the other thing that I always tell every student um, which I hear back from my students often is don't get attached to any one piece because there are so many variables of what can happen to it it can a fly off your wheel while you're footing it it can blow up in the kiln if you've left a air, big air pocket in it. It can break, someone else's piece can smack into it and break it in the bisque fiber. There, it could have the accident of the glazing where it sticks down to the shelf and then the bottom of it breaks. I think the fondest memories remain the same great um, memories that are about to be made or the ones that I'm in a class. I really just am always the happiest to see a student finally get the act of centering or opening or to pull up a vessel and make something and just how happy they are and they all say it out loud, I got it, I think I did it, I, I did it this time. So I, I just like hearing that and seeing that. <laughs>